The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is the Players Lounge. Broadcasting live from Dallas Cowboys World Headquarters at the Star. Now, your hosts, Barry Church, Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, and Newey Scruggs. Victory Monday right here on the Players Lounge. Let's ride. We eat W's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old Davis and Old Jack, baby. Yeah. Danny McRae, Heckma Harrison, yes, Barry Church. I'm Newey Scruggs. This show is brought to you by Tostitos. <laughs> Cowboys 33, Eagles 13. They're Ooh. actually airing it right now on uh, NFL Network. Ooh. Showing a picture of Mike McCarthy playing, playing injured, playing mm. injured out here. Yeah. Keep him guessing. Getting it done. Keep, <laughs> Keep him right. guessing, baby. Yes, he the did. The yes, was he in did. effect. <laughs> it was in effect yesterday. Uh, all of us were correct yeah. in choosing this game. Um, <laughs> looking at it here, Barry, you had the Cowboys winning <laughs> by seven. D-Mac, you had the Cowboys winning by 13. Heck, you had the Cowboys winning by 14. I mm. was, uh, I had them winning by four. So, bottom line is the Cowboys ended up getting mm. it done. They uh, had Philly down, had to leave, had to leave down twenty. So you mm. were the furthest away from uh, from picking the, the, the score, right? Uh, Is that correct or not? Yeah, we both. No, uh, you were. You okay. had you had them three. Yeah, you, you, you were plus 13. three. I was yeah, plus yeah, four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Heckman, I Heckman had a plus fourteen. I like Church that. had a plus seven. Bottom line is. They got the win. You should have took that tasty cake bet, man. man. You ran up out of his scared. <laughs> you should have took that tasty cake, man. Ran up out of his scared. You know, <laughs> complained all week. Is that what it is? You stood That's on. what you felt. You, you felt scared on it. You felt scared. You felt scared. That's what you thought. You thought it was some scared going on, huh? Stood on business. Nah, I gotta know, man. I've been waiting. <laughs> what, 24 hours almost now? I got to know, man. What, what, what's your thoughts on the game? What was you seeing out there? What was going on, Heck, man? You know, what, what's the deal, man? You know I had a little time. You know, <laughs> you know I had a little time. <laughs> you know, this is this is what they call a, a D-Town delicatessen. You know what I'm saying? We don't eat zebra we, we don't we don't eat tasty cakes around here. <laughs> okay. We do, right. the, we do the little Debbie's, you know, the little, little Debbie, Debbie little Z- zebra cake, you know, out of the <laughs> Dallas Independent School <laughs> District. You know, that's what they call a uh, Alamo right there. You know what I'm saying? D I S D. Yeah, <laughs> out of the D I S D. Man, I loved it. I loved okay. everything. Okay. I loved everything about the game. I love what we did up front. I love winning in the trenches. Our offensive line that we've been questioning all this whole time. I think y'all saw them. Beat them boys up up front. And we needed that. And that's something that's going to travel through this next phase of the the season that we're going through that y'all know tough, man. I mean, come on. There's no Mm -hmm. way around it. Mm -hmm. The Buffaloes, the Miami, everybody that you know we're about to play, it's going to be the tough part of our schedule. But I love the way our offensive line performed, specifically. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm, I was ecstatic to watch watch the defense play. Okay. Uh, the defense to me came, and all, although they they, <laughs> they, they they were giving up some yards, you know what they did was they found a way to get back to taking the ball away, yeah, they, right? They, they, and it they, they, wasn't uh, interceptions, but they said, hey, you know what, we're going to punch it out, right? And they were attacking the football. And I like the way that Dan Quinn said, hey, listen, hey, Gilly, you the guy. Gilly, you the guy, and we all, all, all of us in here said that Gilly is the better cover guy mm-hmm. yes. uh, here, and Der- Deron Bland is the best takeaway guy. But Gilly went in there and earned every dollar that he's getting paid mm-hmm. and more. And I said our secondary needs to hold up, and that's what they did. So I'm, I, I was happy to see the defense play where they played. Old man Gilly. Oh, yeah. You yeah, yeah, shouldn't have said that one. See that? You remember what happened to Dylan Brooks mm-hmm. when he called LeBron? Oh, I'm yep. telling the, the young, these youngsters, they're going to get Disrespectful. Y'all school, though. Y'all still school. Disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to do it against A.J. Brown. Yeah, it was big time. Um, and, and, and the other kid over there, uh, that, was, that was impressive. It, it really was. And that's the kind of thing that leads you into, if you're Jerry, okay, he's a free agent at the end of the year. That, that's a player that, especially the next couple of weeks, because you got Stephon Diggs coming up this week, then you got the Cheetah next week here, and then you got St. Brown. I mean, you're about to see some Pro Bowl receivers here. Yeah. You keep this going, um, psh, man, that's, that's not only going to have to bring it back, that's going to be an interesting contract of what you do to bring him back. He'll be 34. He's 33 right now. Probably the, old, well, I say the oldest starting corner in the league. But, man, that that is something that you can't not let that get out of the building, in my opinion. Yeah, you can't do it. I mean, he played outstanding when uh, whoever he was going against, whether it's Devontae Smith, uh, A.J. Brown, whoever the case may be, he, he stayed on top. 
You know, yeah. that, and that's what we talked about last week about, you know, do you contain the big play or do you, you know, and let them get between the 20s, kind of a bend but don't break defense, or how do you play that route? And I feel, feel like they did do that because they were able to move the ball, running the football on this Dallas Cowboys defense. But when it came down to it, to me, this game really came down to two things, man. It was the penalties. Cowboys were the more disciplined team out there. We saw, you know, Philadelphia have – bone breaking penalties out there. And yeah, I'm talking did. about drive killers and drive yeah. extenders. When you when you talk about two that came to mind to me were the Darius Slay, Slay play. It was a the third P- down and like mm-hmm. okay, yeah, thirteen. Coming. Oh yeah, that's coming up. It was third down and thirteen or whatever. The gall- when it was short to Gallup. Yeah. That's a, you know, pass interference that extended that drive which the Cowboys then went on and scored. And then you also talk about the Bradbury play. Third and six. Yeah. With uh, Turpin. Now, these were both pass interferences, mm-hmm. but to me, the more disciplined team was the Dallas Cowboys, and they went out there and earned that. And then you talk about these takeaways, three of them, from Philadelphia's three best players overall. You're talking about, you know, Hurts, you're talking about Swift, and you're talking about uh, A.J. Brown. And to me, it's it's the fumbles, but it's where they occurred at. All three of those fumbles were in Dallas's territory. Smith. Smith, that's what. Oh, Smith, I'm sorry, Smith. All three of those fumbles happened deep in Dallas' territory where Philly's driving, and they could come away with some points, either seven or three. They're driving, and they're deep in their territory, and you got the huge strip out from uh, Donovan Wilson. You yes. got the big-time punch out from Marquise Bell. <laughs> yeah, I, I said he had a ball out, and yeah, he went out there, and he guy. did his thing. So shout-out to Marquise Bell and your boy, Demont Clark. Mm-hmm. You know, they both, to me, played outstanding game. But uh, to me, it came down to those two things, penalties and this defense having a knack to take the football away. Ten penalties for Philadelphia for 95 yards in the game versus the Cowboys seven penalties for 60 yards. Yeah, that's what that's what it came down to. And I hated the the, the one uh, I know Biotis was getting called back to back penalties and mm-hmm. stuff. Dumb luck on that on the on the foot getting caught on Zach Martin. Oh, like, they all just, tripped over. Like, so, yeah. That's I'm watching the film. I said that you know sometimes it's just not your day. <laughs> yeah. That's like you can't even control that at that point, right? You just your, your body's out of position and you're trying to stop yourself from falling. Or you just so happen, um, you know. T- to get a penalty in that situation. Mm-hmm. So I know it's a penalty that has to be called and, and like that's on him. But to me, that's just dumb luck. Yeah. That's one of them you, you look at and you like, man, we need to fix penalties. Like, how can we fix this one? Yeah, like, what, yeah, what yeah, ain't nothing you can do about that. Ain't nothing you can do. Going over to the other side, I mean, talking about defense, man, I, I, I we, we started the week off talking about it. And Dan Quinn, we still trust because of mm-hmm. Seattle and their wide what you, receivers what you, at wait, that. I'm sorry, what you doing with this? You can eat that? What you mean? Are oh, you about to eat it? You done opened the box? <laughs> like, I'm just saying it out. I'm saying it out. I'm saying it out. You said it by yourself. It's 320 calories per serve. I wish you ain't tell me that. I was about to reach I just said it right there. I just said, don't worry about it. Don't feel tempted at all. But all the tempted at all. My whole workout gone. Yeah. With that. <laughs> don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Okay, but anyway, but I was talking about this defense, yeah. man, and, and going back to that Seattle game and, and the effect that D, uh, DK Metcalf had in that first half. And then you started talking last week about do you travel uh, Stephon Gilmore. And you saw immediately, they didn't wait. It wasn't. Oh, we gonna we gonna make an adjustment mm-hmm. in the second half. We talked. I mean, we talked extensively about that. Mm-hmm. And you saw, man, his ability. This that was a battle. What y'all didn't see on TV that in the stadium. Now they were chirping the entire game. Mm-hmm. Like it was it, it timeouts talking across to each other and. That battle, man, the way that it played out and just the way that Stephon Gilmore rose to the, uh, the challenge in that this is a guy that you know what he's made of. He's got all the accolades you, mm-hmm. you know. And, and it's like his value to this team, I think, is way more than whatever dollars and cents is because on the other side of that, for Bland, did he, they ain't even test him. No. <laughs> they didn't even test him. I mean, and, and they did have a little safety help over the top at times, and I don't blame them for that, right? Mm-hmm. But still – to not even attempt to even go over there and, te- and test the guy that you know, hey, if I put some a 50-50 ball out there, chances are 26 can can intercept this. But defensively, just staying disciplined. You guys have gotten on them about those tight the T stunts mm-hmm. and getting out of their assignment alignment sound and giving uh, Hurts an opportunity to burn them in the run. They stayed up the field. They stayed assigned to sound, and that didn't allow Hurts to do any of that, but he still has some plays. And usually when you see Hurts make those plays with, with his feet, you're like, uh-oh, here they come. Mm-hmm. They're about to, you know, hey, they're about to do it. They're on the move. But they didn't have any interceptions, but those fumble recoveries, man, Huge. that was the de- that really defined this game and the way that the defense performed, taking the ball away as they were on the drive those three times. And when you look at it, man, there was, there was two things that kind of, you know, stuck out to me as 
well. In that first go around, you saw Hurts make all the throws, whatever the case may yeah. be. You saw him being able to drop it in the bucket to Devontae Smith on the sidelines right over top of Bland. We're like, man, that was a heck of a throw. It comes to this game in the Cowboys stadium, the same type of throw he had right off of the fingertips of Devontae Smith, right off of him, just you know, just a step short. It was the throws that he wasn't able to make. And then you look at it, and if I'm Philly, I'm slightly concerned. Just, just a slightly concerned because when Dan Quinn was throwing that zero pressure, and for those that don't yeah, know what zero about pressure is. I you about that, man. Just, you know, for those that don't know, everybody's coming except for the cover guys. Yeah. So the, the back, you know, the corner safeties, they got man to man coverage, no help. When they're throwing that, that at you, and it hurts, you saw it. They weren't disguising. Everybody was at the line of scrimmage. You got to have an answer for that. You got to. And he he wasn't able to do it. He was back punting, you know, throwing those fadeaway throws that weren't right where the receiver can catch it and, you know, make a play and get a field. I think that confused him a little bit. So, if I'm Philadelphia, I'm like, we got to get an answer to this. Because you know it's a copycat league. And you know that's exactly what defense is going to do. They're going to look at that and say, oh, he, he struggles when, when, you, when you bring it out on him, when you uh, blitz him like that. So, to me, if I'm Philly, I'm slightly nervous. But, man, Dan Quinn, he has some answers for him. The, the answer is going to be screens. <laughs> 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 like that, that's the way you be zero covers yeah. is you, you run a screen or you have a, a, a quick out or a quick slant try to get across somebody's face um but I, like this is why we continue to talk about in Dan Quinn we trust mm -hmm. right because you see him be able to go out there and then make those adjustments from game one to now or for the beginning of the season to now or Deron Bland playing well to slipping a little bit to okay I'm gonna talk to my guys and Gilly you're gonna go over there and this is gonna be your assignment this is this is what we need you to do in order, order for us to win and I think the reason they don't throw at Deron Bland is I didn't see on all 22 I haven't watched it but I'm assuming that there was like you said some extra attention over there mm -hmm. to where Bland was maybe a linebacker or Marquise Bell or they disguised showing it like they were going to be giving a little help to Deron Bland and got uh, Jalen Hurts off his spot a little bit before he went over there to try to test Gilly, which was a losing battle for him. So Dan Quinn is just – he's just masterful with how he's calling plays and, and getting his uh, his players in the right position to do what they do best. Eat Deron Curse making plays. You just see guys out <laughs> yeah, there the – I'm saying you see well. guys out yeah. there playing well, Marquise Bell. Like mm -hmm. you said, hey, is he undersized? Can he make the – he goes out there and makes a huge – play to cause a turnover. Yeah. Dan Quinn, to me, the, 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 his hand yeah, he just he just doing it, you know, the right way here with the Dallas Cowboys, and I don't want to see him go anywhere. So I'm gonna just, hey, DQ. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you last, night, <laughs> last night's broadcast had him leaving. I know, I heard. They were trying to get him about it because you won't to see him again. Ain't no way he can be here. That's what they man. It was rough. Looking at the um, drive charts for Philadelphia, they had nine drives in this game. Did not score one single touchdown. Let me mm. just go through what they did. Uh, got the ball, you know. First drive, ball to 25, eight-play drive, ends in a fumble. Second one, starts at the 25, eight-play drive with a field goal. Third one, starts at 25, 10-play <laughs> drive, ends with a field goal. Fourth one, starts at 25, three-play drive, end of half. Second half, uh, get the ball to 25, four-play drive, fumble. Sixth one. Get the ball to 27, improved by two yards. Three plays, punt. Uh, seventh drive, starts at the Philadelphia 25, nine-play drive, ends in downs. Then the last two, they both started the 25. The first, uh, it was a seven-play drive, ended in a fumble. And then the last one, two-play drive, end of game. Um, this was dominant when you look at this and you just say, wow. Um, this defense really did respond. And I thought McCarthy had a good thing that he talked about after the Seahawks game. They went back. They looked at what they needed to do. They saw a thing. Okay, we need to do just here, do this, do that. And, and boy, they were on point. This defense was on point last night. Who would have thought? That Mike would have called the game that he called last night. Yeah, he was on fire. Um, Mike was on fire. He was on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, got, Big I, Mike. I, I, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, Big Mike was on fire last was, night in his play calling. Just the running game. To, well, that's what shocked me. More Finally. than anything. Finally. The running game shocked me. And Rico, the, Rico out the ball, huh? Hello. Rico <laughs> out the <laughs> ball. He said, listen, he said he wanted to be a running team. I'm going to say this. Mike. Big Mike has been cooking to me all season because he started one way. Like I said, he adjusted. And the change that you've seen, or not even the change, maybe they just weren't on the same page because it was a new offense being put in. And the more comfortable that all these players have been getting in this offense, I think it's working better for Big Mike. But I think he's been cooking all season. Uh, he's been playing. If you're playing from ahead, he's been able to keep the leads. <laughs> if you're playing from behind, when, whenever that is, you've seen him be able to get Dak Prescott and his offense in position to come back and make plays. And last night was no different. Last, last night was, to me, masterful by both coordinators, offense and defense, and I, special teams as well, even with that mm -hmm. fake punt. 
it's it's Aubrey out here going. I'm gonna believe that. But then, yeah. but then you see Aubrey go out there 59, 60, and this is the question that we had at the beginning of the season of like, hey man, what's up with kicker? Just based off what happened last season, mm-hmm. and did they say he outscored Philly? <laughs> He, uh, their offense for sure. Yeah, their yeah, offense, yeah, yeah, outscore yeah, Philly's yeah. offense. So he had four field goals, and then he had uh, one, two, three extra points. <laughs> he yeah, outscores yeah, Philly's yeah. offense, and he's and he and he's. I remember he, he reminds me of what Dan Bailey was when Dan Bailey yeah. first caught fire here yeah. and couldn't miss, mm-hmm. right? And Dak Prescott called him butter, yeah, <laughs> old <is> butter, <laughs> butter hitting them field goals, man, and and that and that makes it easier for you to be able to call plays and then trust in your defense because you know you have that weapon out there to go and get you that three no matter where you're at on the field. Brandon Aubrey, sixty yard field goal 59 yard field goal 50 and 45 mm. yard field goals in the game first player in NFL history to hit two 59 plus field goals in a game go back here you look offensively um the first play the, they had they scored on seven of the nine drives they had offensively the first one was a 10 play drive ends in a touchdown second one's a 13 play drive ends in a field goal Cooking. third one ends in, is a 12 play drive ends in a touchdown then an eight play drive ends in a touchdown and got half in the second half first drive they punted Second was the fumble, which ended up going back for a touchdown for the mm-hmm. defense. But then they closed the show with three straight field goals on drives of nine plays, 11 plays, and nine play drives. Mike McCarthy is uh, dang good, and you start looking at him. This is 10 wins now for the Cowboys in three straight seasons. Mm. The last time they've had that happen was the 1991 through 1996 seasons. What we're seeing from Mike McCarthy as a head coach and a play caller is uh, – Man, this is this is this is going to be hard for somebody to tell me, and I don't care how this season ends, to tell me you're going to get rid of this guy because you have to replace two people: a head coach yeah, and a boy. play call. Yeah, ninety-one to ninety-six was some good years. Hey, they were Super Bowl years. It was some uh, good years, man. I ain't uh, going there. Hey, <laughs> no, no, hey, 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 hey. But the conversation, yet, but the yet. conversation we had last week were, were in the passing game came down to Tony Pollard and what his effect could be as well. Seven catches, 37 yards. And that's all we needed. You know, we needed him to make an impact on, on moving the chains, but also Brandon Cooks. Mm-hmm. Brandon Cooks and his ability to stretch to get down the field. They try some, you know, crossing routes with him, things like But they, those you can see their safeties. You put a linebacker on them or a nickel on Brandon Cooks, you're asking for trouble. Yeah, you're asking for trouble, and that's the same thing right now with Jake Ferguson. You you get weak coverage on on number 87. You're asking for it. Let's get a break in. Um, we must talk about the lion, the flu game, mm. the flu game <laughs> for <laughs> no. Micah Parsons. We'll do that next with Danny McRae, no. Heckman Harris, and Barry Church. I'm Newey Scruggs. This is Blaze Lounge, brought to you by Tostitos on DallasCowboys.com radio. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites in a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl, handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or any time you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. There is no I in Dallas. There is no I in heart either. No I in Blue Star or in Lone Star for that matter. And there's no I in how about them Cowboys? Smirnoff knows there's no I in football. Football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks, home or away, we rally together, we cry together, and we always rally cry together because there's definitely no I in Cowboys fans. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. 
Back to the Players' Lounge. Tis the season for youth football and dance camps presented by Invisalign. Don't miss your chance to learn from the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders and former NFL players at AT AT&T Stadium on December 22nd and 23rd. Celebrate the holidays with the Cowboys. Register today at DallasCowboys.com slash camps. Thank you, Heck Maharis, and you on the Players Lounge. Brought to you by Tostitos. We've got Barry Church, got Danny mm-hmm. McCray. I'm Newey Scruggs here. Micah Parsons with his uh, 12th sack of the season last night. 12 sacks in the first three NFL seasons. That ties him mm. with Reggie White who is in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So only those two men have done that their first three seasons in the NFL. Uh, Mm -hmm. We got the note from Cowboys PR earlier in the day that Micah was going to play. They didn't tell us what was going on. You get there at the stadium, people said that Micah uh, was dealing with the flu and they didn't have him out there in warm-ups. He he took everything he could take, he said, after the game, medicine-wise. He performed. That one play on Lane Johnson. (sighs) When he drove back Lane Johnson, the other uh, eagle lineman tries to jump in there, and they, he still gets on top of Hurts. And, and Lane Johnson is no, it's no chump. Of famous, man. Great. Yeah, he, he gonna be no chump right great. there. He's going to have a gold jacket. Uh, that, that, that was pretty doggone impressive to me. Yeah. I mean, and, and you see it from, from the guy his size. Like, you would expect something like that from, you know, a guy like, you know, D-Ware's size or something like that coming off the edge. But for him to, to line up where he was at – and just say, you know what, I'm going to go straight through you. Like, I'm going to bully you all the way into the quarter. There was no shake before. There was no swim move, none of that. He just went straight through the six and the five. And like you said, he drove him back. But two linemen. There was another guy you know, trying yeah. to help him out. Couldn't do nothing about it and still had the strength to hold off Lane Johnson, grab Hurts with the other arm, and bring him down for a sack. I and mean, all three of them all hurt. Just, <laughs> and just get up and just like it was person. nothing. I mean, that, that dude's special, that, man. That, that reminds you, like, as a, from a defensive perspective, if you're trying to tackle a running back who has the power to run you over, then also can shake you. Mm, all right, yeah. Marson Lynch, Adrian Peterson, guys like that who can cut and make you miss. And then it, it puts you in a position to where you got to play a little, little little soft and a little hesitant because you're not sure what's coming at you at this mm-hmm. point. Because Michael Parsons could beat you with a spin move. He beat you inside, beat you outside. And, oh, by the way, he got the power to run right down the middle of you. Yeah. So you can't be as stout as you want to because you also got to be prepared to protect your inside and your outside. And I think that's that like that's the tough part about yeah. Like guarding a guy like that, even a guy like Lane Johnson having having to deal with Michael Parsons, you can see that's the type of difficulty uh, that they have when when dealing with a guy that has twelve sacks. At yeah. the, <laughs> that's my that's my excitement, man, for watching him is how quick he is off the ball. It's just it's ridiculous, mm-hmm. and it, Lane Johnson already gets a jump. If you watch him, Lane is already jumping. It, yeah. it, it almost looks offside. like he's offsides. He's Whatever. It, I, I don't, they don't he's call it. Yeah. But All just the, the, the way that he's getting off the ball and understanding that Micah's able to get even with him in one step. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, we even, I'm leaving. But still, his, he's, he's also uh, learned a, a multitude of moves. He's not just relying on his speed. He's stepping outside, cutting back inside. He's spin moving, all of that. And just all the different ways that Dan Quinn is using him. And that's why I think, look, I, I, didn't, see, I didn't hear the broadcast. I didn't watch out because I was there. But, man, if I'm Dan Quinn, when you have a talent like this, and you have a young guy in Deron Bland, Diggs. We, we ain't even talk about Diggs, dog. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but do you get Diggs back? I mean, that game yesterday, I was just sitting there saying to myself, man, when we get, when we in full health on defense, if Diggs had, was able to put his imprint on this game, and I know those ifs and maybes and whatever, but it just tells me how exciting the future looks, especially when you have young guys like this that's balling out. 12 and a half sacks, and I mean, should be 13 and a half. It should be 15. If they call a holding play, man, if they call a holding, <laughs> oh, half of it, because he's been. Dog, he's being held. Mugged. And, and Mugged. they're not and they're not calling it. But I mean, look, everybody else complaining about it. Mike is just going out there handling his business. But man, it's just exciting to see a young guy with that kind of burst and speed. And I don't if he never slows down, obviously, in, whatever happens, injury, whatever. That the speed that that guy has is just uncanny. If he adds some weight, yeah, I, this is going to be a problem for a lot of years to come. Okay. You know what the problem going to be? How do you pay <laughs> Micah Parsons? Dak is having an MVP like mm, season. He's break the bank. He's he. You got to get his cap number down. It's like sixty million next year. <laughs> and uh, yeah, CD, you know, by the way, you got CD Land. I mean, and Gilly played the way he played. <laughs> Biotish is up. <laughs> Yeah, there's gonna, there's gonna be some. Somebody missing a boat. You only yeah. got what two nah, years on Bland too, right? You only got two years on him left. 
Yeah, they gonna, they gonna pause. They, 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 they gonna pause on Bland just because when you got a guy like Trayvon, you just play, just paid, and you're worrying about what you do with a guy like Gilmore. Mm-hmm. I think at that point, you you like the Ron Bland is playing amazing, but the right now is. If if Gilmore goes out there and plays like this against those receivers that you just named, Diggs, Tyree, Tyree Hill, yeah. St. Brown, and then who knows about the playoffs? It, yeah, it, it's no it way, bro. Yeah, it's, it's no, it, especially it, if he want to be here. Yeah. I know right now there's some guys, agents in the room. Hey, just be prepared, guy. You know, start trading, dude. Start trading. <laughs> you know, I just let you know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Can what? you do that though? Can, can you can you put? You said Diggs is getting what next year? Four, for 17? 17, 18? Man, they make it work. You know I mean? You're they, right. They, they make it work. They, the, going, the cap is a mythical thing. All right, they're going it's make, fluid and it's going up. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you, price. They, they're going up. <laughs> Marlo, but, Marlo, it's, going up. it's going, it's going up. up. But they're going to be some. They're going to be looking. You know, there's, there's. I don't know who your man is up to. Is it Chad? Somebody up there <laughs> got the highlighter, and they, they already circling dudes. And I, I got about a couple of mine. I ain't gonna name, but right now <laughs> we can talk about the break. But uh, there's some guys. That, yeah. I tell you, maybe agent or somebody need to come and tell. Hey man, just let you know based on what's going on this year. They, they may, they may be coming. When they it, may be coming. When it comes down to Dak Prescott, man, there's, there's no way. You can't. You don't extend it. There's, I mean, he is playing at a level right now. We talked at the beginning of the season about his interceptions. If, if he played the same way, I mean, the the year he had last year really cast a, a, a dark cloud over him. Mm-hmm. But coming in, especially last night, man, Dak was dotting. Yeah. He was what? dotting guys up. I mean, and he may not have had his best performance by a long shot, but then you see, hey, if I make a mistake, if I need to make a throw, he can make that throw. It's the it's the intangibles that, that you heard uh, guys like um, the the quarterback for the I can't Aaron Rodgers mm-hmm. talk about and, and just a, and praise him for the things that he's doing pre snap. And everybody's talking about how cerebral Dak is playing, and him and Mike are on the same page, obviously in a way that he has the trust in him to make those adjustments at the line. And I think that as the years go on, that you've seen that start to happen with the upper echelon, the best of the best quarterbacks. He's starting to mimic that and look like that. Mm -hmm. Hater man. But that was never the issue because Jerry always had talked about his belief in Dak Prescott. That was the outside people who were saying that. The thing now I look about, heck, is the price just went up. Yeah, was it, was it what my man said? Yesterday's price is not, not today's, today's price. price. So whatever they, they were about 50, to pay, you at least 50. you you jumped up another level because of how he's played, and that's why I'm just like between Parsons, CD, and Dak. Man, there's gonna be some folks that got to take some haircuts. Can I ask here. this question though? Yeah. When you look at a, a Patrick Mahomes right now. Patrick Mahomes is missing a lot of weapons. He's not the player that you used to, used to seeing him as because he doesn't have them. And mm-hmm. I think he got talked into. I mean, he doesn't have his coach. He doesn't have Cheetah. He doesn't have some of the running backs, the guys that he used to have that made him look as be- as good as he did. I'm I'm looking at Dak and I'm saying, man, look. Okay, I know everybody want to be the highest paid, and I'm not asking them to take less. I'm just saying, how about those guys that don't look the same when you don't have those weapons on the outside? So it happens every time. Only person that you know was able to succeed through time like that without you know is, is Tom Brady. When we talk about a guy who constantly kind of took one. those slight haircuts in order to keep the Gronkowskis and all those guys out there, but you see it now. You had the perfect example with uh, Mahomes out there. He becomes the highest paid, restructures to get even more money to. He lost Tyreek Hill. You know what I'm saying? He lost uh, Shardavius Ward on the outside, one yeah. of the best corners out there to, to San Francisco. He lost his big tackle, Orlando Brown. They, they're yeah. not able to keep these pieces around him because he's one of the highest pay. And that's, you know, down the line, that's what's going to happen with the Cowboys, in my opinion. But you can't worry about that right now. You're on the road right now to trying to do something special. So all that in the future really doesn't matter. Because, because look at the Rams. All right, the Rams, we take it all, all mm-hmm. right? Because at this point, the, the goal is Super Bowl, right? Mm-hmm. What does longevity matter if the goal that you're trying to reach ain't the Super Bowl and you're not going to be able yeah. to say, listen, whatever it takes to get there, that's what I'm going to do, all right? And then you can still remain competitive even if you don't get into that situation. My homes are no problem is these dudes can't catch the ball. They open. All right, they, they, you got guys who just not making plays, and that's but not something that's consistent. have to deal with, though. No, 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 no. Those no, guys, no, no, it's it's ain't money, there but, but that's also, money, but yeah. that's also like you just got some bad, play. like you as an NFL player. What these dudes is doing is different than like we ain't able to pay a guy enough money to catch the football. Like they should that's be what able you to left catch with. Yeah. when you can't grab that. 
Twenty oh, million dollar receiver, that's a fifteen great million point. dollar receiver, a, a, a six million dollar guy should be able to catch. That's what no, you left Noah with. Brown and these dudes was here. They you like you should still be <laughs> able to catch the ball. Like yeah. these dudes out here, like I'm talking about. Bluka, bluka. Fresh, I mean, fresh off the chest <laughs> and the helmet. No, it does. Yeah, I will go back to you. You talk about Brady taking <laughs> haircuts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> bro. I be, hey, beat him up, ball. I'm, 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 game at the game. Get him out of coach. He has no hands. But they don't got nowhere else to go, right? Because they don't because have that type of money. Bread, but but yeah. I'm saying, if I'm paying to do five, six million, you got to be like James Washington, not him no more. But he that can't catch the ball. <laughs> like, you can find a guy. We've had guys, Cedric Wilson, all these dudes who can come in here and through the draft or whatever, no, you still got to be able to find dudes who can at least catch the ball. Because Andy Reid and them still drawing up the plays to get these dudes open. They just, I, I ain't seen nothing like it, to be honest with so, you. So that's Tom, a great point. Tom saved all that money for them. How many times did they spend that money on receivers? <laughs> they didn't. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't. You know, oh, How West, much they pay Randy? You know, Wes Welker, thank you. Go on. Go on. And Mandola, come do that thing over here. Um, the Chris Hogan, he was up yeah, there for a minute. I mean, you know, they went up there. They just found some dudes who could work with Tom. And Tom was like, he can't catch. He got to go. And they brought in Chad Johnson. Yeah, that didn't work. You got to go. I mean, they brought in some different name guys. And if they didn't get it done, they ran them on out of there. Brandon LaFell was a guy. Okay, he was he was here there, and boom, he won a Super Bowl with him. It was Super Bowl well, forty nine against. against yeah. So to me, this goes back on management not getting it done. For instance, Clyde edwards alaire they used a first round pick on him at running back. Mm -hmm. When maybe they should have used that on another receiver because clearly they know how to go find other running backs who can play. Um, you traded for Kadarius Tony. He can't catch. How long do you let this dude keep on not catching? This is on them. Yeah. Uh, can, can we just get on that uh, also? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, he was outside. Hey, bro. All that whining and crying they was doing yesterday about, bro, these, the dude he was, was off. So, how many times we done seen our dude line up offside and get called for line up offside? offside. This dude on offense, referee can't even see the ball. He's he talking about, oh, oh, we don't want the game to be about that. What? The Not rules? lining up oh. offside? We don't want it to be about the rules. So, wait a minute. That guy said they usually warn us. I'm like, well, since when? And, and, when, the, when the ref go, you ask them. Up. Yeah, I used to see him. Turn over they, there they'll hit you up. with some sometimes. <laughs> That's when you outside the numbers. Yeah. Like when you outside the numbers, they'll hit you with the hey brother, you might want to back up. Kadarius Tony was all the way in the hash. He was it was a cadet split. He was all the way next to the, the tackle. Hey. He ain't about to yell, hey, you better back up. You better back up. No, he ain't about to say that. It didn't Pam Home say, I saw the picture, but I'm just saying, no, nah, you just saying what? <laughs> he all sides, bro. The and the, and he threw the flag him. right when the like it ain't like he waited to throw the flag. Man. Bro, he was offside. He took off. It was you offensive offsides, bro. Be mad at your receivers. Had a hell of a but team, I but man. I think I think that's what like when, when you say your anger is directed at the wrong person, I no, think that's, that, that's what that is. Cause it's, he can't yell at, you can't yell at his guys because yeah. he still need him to play, yeah. so he got to go off on the road. He really wanted to slap one of them receivers. Yeah. Like, he wanted to put his hands on one of them, all right? Yeah. And I think everybody out here knows that. I ain't seen a team drop passes like this since I've been watching football. And lost two games. Yeah. You've lost your last two games because your guys can't can't mm. make throw. I mean, can't can't catch these passes that are all on the hands right there. Out route. Um, <laughs> no, I just, I just want to say, you know, when you're talking about Belichick and, and that Belichick model, and a lot of teams tried to emulate that, and they failed miserably because he's just a master at evaluating talent for his system that he runs. Mm -hmm. And he believes wholeheartedly in his defensive system. And He's got arrogant and started thinking anybody can call these offensive plays without Tom Brady, and that's not the case. He mm -hmm. didn't realize he had the coach on the field. And to me, if Dak is – if he is morphing into that, I'm not calling him Tom Brady. I'm just saying if he's morphing into that, then maybe, just maybe, you can you – can, Go with B level talent, but I don't. I don't believe that. I, I don't believe. That. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Not with him. So, hey, we'll pay that heck of a town evaluator, but I, you know, I wouldn't. Nah, I wouldn't oh, do that. The great Scott of going. Scott, hey, who, hey, you, hey, you bringing up, someone to us, Scott? <laughs> Scott, you gonna you know, go, get that? Who you gonna get in? You <laughs> bring somebody out here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dan Quinn, you know, <laughs> PR extraordinaire, Scott of going there. All right, let's get our uh, last break in here. Um, there is something going on here at AT&T State. I want to dive into it with you guys as former players about this little streak here. We'll do that next with Danny McCray, Heck Harris, and Barry Church on New Scouts Players Live. Brought to you by Tostitos on DallasCowboys.com Radio. 
To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection. Featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more, the bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of us magically transforming our smoothie bowls into two new decadent flavors. Dig into a cool acai or pitaya bowl, handcrafted with crunchy, purely Elizabeth granola, fresh strawberries, and finished with a velvety chocolate hazelnut drizzle. Perfect for breakfast, lunch, or any time you want to munch. And that's the sound of you making them disappear. Smoothie Bowls, now in two new decadent flavors. Only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at Get Jack Black dot com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip that's get jackblack.com slash cowboys with the code cowboys vip i'm dak prescott quarterback of the dallas cowboys and they snap at the prescott who looks right it's not there he escapes left he'll run for a first down just like football when it comes to crypto it's important to have a team you can trust with blockchain.com i know i'm in good hands since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Back, Back to the Players' Lounge. Experience the most electrifying event of the holiday season, Cowboys Christmas Extravaganza, powered by Reliant. Every Friday and Saturday night through December 16th, Cowboys Christmas Extravaganza ignites the star in Frisco with an unforgettable holiday ex- performance showcasing 65 performance performers, including the world-renowned Dallas Cowboy cheerleader Santa Claus and appearances from your favorite Dallas Cowboy football heroes. Visit the Star District. Dot com for more information. Thank you, Heck Harrison. Your players lunch brought to you by Toast Details. By the way, uh, looking at the other uh, games that we picked over the weekend, mm. um, Cincinnati at Indianapolis. Uh, I got it wrong. I picked Indy. Yeah. D Mac, you got it wrong. Yeah, that's a wrap. Uh, <laughs> Minnesota at Las Vegas. Well, who got, who got it right? Oh, man. 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 Go back to that Cincinnati Listen, game. Dog, y'all was sweating go the back. whole go time. Back. Y'all know y'all Hold sweating. Hold on. Go back to that Cincinnati. Who, who okay. that? Cincinnati. You got okay, Cincinnati right. right. You had Cincinnati 24-17. Yeah, yeah, clap now. Yeah. That last one, you ain't gonna yeah. be clapping. Let's go. Yeah, Minnesota at Las Vegas. Uh, I was, I was right. I had it. Uh, I was right. You were right. Okay, that's better. That's better. And D Mac, you were right. Heckman, you Damn. had Vegas winning eighteen. <laughs> I needed that one, man. Yeah, that was a horrible that was game. That was rough. Thing Seattle, that. San Francisco. We all got right. Man, we was, all got it right. And we also that that game was going to be a lot tougher for San Francisco. They won. And, and it, it would have been a lot tougher had, had Gino played. Play, yeah. Lock was Lock was throwing that thing on that, that. I'm telling you, man, San Francisco, they got they got a chance to go out there and lose. Uh, Buffalo at Kansas City. Oh, Barry man. Church was the only one who got it right. Boy. Give me the dust. He had Give Buffalo me the dust. 28 to Give 24. Give me the dust. How the hell? That's a good pick. It's going to be a tough matchup and this then, week. Uh, That's a good pick. Then, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough matchup Broncos at the Chargers. He was wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was wrong. Clap, clap on that one. <laughs> he was wrong. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let me rust. Let's ride. Let me, listen, Shout listen. Out to that, something, let, let, listen. And, and, and it, this is a common thing between a lot of the teams that are winning games. And some of them, if they had quarterbacks, would be great. You put that in the group message about New York, the New York Jets yeah. and how – it's a shame that that great defense is being wasted playing, like that. But out. then they show out and they go out there and they play well. Mm-hmm. Cleveland's defense, Denver's defense, our defense, San Francisco's defense. Those are like here and then you got where, where it breaks off a little bit and mm-hmm. then the other ones are a few far in between. But th- those teams, like the defenses that are being played, defense that are being played in the league by those teams – 
Man, it's, it's just excellent. They got some players out there. They making big-time plays. Russ is cooking. But the defense is the story oh, yeah, there. They, I don't they, care what they, nobody they, they say. Rolling. Russ doing what he's doing, but they defense is outstanding. Yeah, they they well. were trying to fire old Vance Joseph uh, after the 70 points they gave up uh, in, in Miami. But they have turned things around. So, clearly, he's coaching very well along with Sean Payton. Cowboys have now won 15 consecutive at AT&T Stadium, the longest streak by the Cowboys since 1979 and 1980. 18 straight. You two dudes weren't even born. The last time that happened. So, <laughs> as former players, <laughs> do you see a different Yo. sense of the – yeah, it's Texas Stadium, man. Um, <laughs> do you guys see a different sense in the atmosphere at AT&T Stadium? No, 100%. We talked about this a couple weeks ago. You know, when, when we were playing at AT&T Stadium, it wasn't like it, it is now. And yeah. that's just calling a spade a spade. When you went there to those – whether it's night games, noon games. They had the, the Louboutins They on. had the lubes on. <laughs> you know, they was fresh to death. Everybody was out there, and, and, and they find us. Yeah. Right? And, and there wasn't a lot of white towels being waved around, screaming on third down. Man, we did the game over there um, against oh, Thursday night, Thanksgiving yeah. against Seattle. We're on the sideline sitting there. And you could just feel the energy. Like, when that kickoff was about to go, I mean, it, it felt like the stadium was vibrating. Yeah. Third downs come around, it, it was so loud, you can barely hear yourself think out there. And those are the type of atmospheres where teams, they they feel that. They they, they feel that energy coming from off the, off, the, uh, off the fans or whatever. Third down, you make a big play, the whole crowd goes, ooh. Mm. Like, that's that's unreal. Like, when when Damone Clark and, and Bell converged on Smith for that crazy. Hit, big hit, everybody crazy. was going crazy yeah. in there. And, and you could feel that as a player. So, it's definitely a, a big-time advantage for them at uh, at and so, so, you're saying there's a college atmosphere in there now? Yeah, I, what, it's, what, it's almost there. Well, I'm going to say, what, 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 what were we at? SEC, Big 12? What were we at? Where nah, we they, right, they, right now, I give them Big 12 right now. They ain't SEC yet. 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 They ain't SEC
possibly a home game, you, you're going to be pretty good. You got to you got to get home. I think you got to get number one seed. One. I mean, this team is so different at home versus the road. You're saying the whole way through. Yeah, you, there was a stat out there. I mean, this team is averaging 41 points per game at home as opposed to on the road. They're only averaging 23. So, to me, the Cowboys, you, you got to get as many home games as you possibly can once the playoffs come. So, I, you got to go to number one seed. You, you can't lose if you don't play. All right. yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. One seed, get the bye week, <laughs> get on up out of there, and mm-hmm. whoever comes to AT&T Stadium after that, they got to come see you at a place where at that point hopefully you didn't want with 15, 16 straight. Yeah, exactly. 15 straight 15. at that time. 15 straight. So yeah, one seed, take the week off, right? Practice and then come back in. And the only reason oh, I yeah. say that is because of the way that San Francisco's playing right now. I mean yeah, they, nobody wants to see them. Nobody wanna yeah. see them. And I'm just saying like they look like they have just they got the number one seed on lock right now. I, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest with you. This is gonna be I think San Francisco has gotten better. I think we are a totally different team since we played San Francisco. Uh, I think we're a totally different team. Like I said, we went into the bye week. Mm-hmm. Everything changed. We see we see Brandon Cooks getting involved. You see what CeeDee Lamb is doing. You see the defense playing better. Damone Clark and those young guys starting Good to get land. a little bit more comfortable. Oh, yeah, by the way, Gilly's going to be traveling on IU. I think it's a little I think it's a little different. I'm good. I, I, don't, I don't want that. But, but, but so I don't, I don't, I don't, think, it, I don't think it's that big of a difference right now. So I'm not worried about San Fran. <laughs> Whoa. So give, me, give me my No, no. Like, I'm not going to get the two seed. No, no. I'm not going to get the two seed. So I don't. I don't have to play them. Oh, you know what I'm saying? So you ain't worried like no, we mad. You know, it's not like it. Oh no, nah, let's get two. And I said, I'm not. I'm not worried about them enough to say I'm gonna I'm pass up a bye week. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. Nah, nah, I got you. Know. Give me Miami to win. By the way, 42-17. Oh, oh man, you. This is, <laughs> Fanduel. <Great. laughs> yes. We got two. We got two. About to get the two and on up here. Yeah. Thirteen and a half. Or yeah. thirteen and a half. Ooh, what are they? <laughs> Um, by, by the way, uh, prayers up to your boy Justin Herbert. They didn't broke him. Uh, yeah, he out for this. Kellen, man. Yeah. Kellen, man. Kellen. They, they didn't broke the man. Nah, I, gotta, I gotta go out west now, man. <laughs> I, gotta go, I gotta go out west, man. Yeah, go help him pack his bags. <laughs> <laughs> go on over there. Go on there. Take him a dump. The only thing. Take him a dump. Pick him a uh, gold mouth. Pick him all man, up. <laughs> hey, the man's had enough. Had the enough. man's had enough. <laughs> all right, we got McCarthy coming up here at 3 o'clock. Let me get upstairs. Hey, Danny McCray, thank you. Heckman Harrison, thank you. Barry Church, thank you. Chris, Jazz. Yes. Big Will, Joshy, everybody's a part of this. We appreciate your players. Line brought to you by Tostitos. Talk to you tomorrow right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!